This is an ESC. This is an ESC from a five inch mini quad. And right over here on that by my finger right there is a pad that was ripped off of it. Uh, you know, that's that happens and I gotta fix it. Or, I mean, it's a $15 device, I don't really have to fix it. But I was trying to think about whether or not I should film this or not. Uh, but it turns out that something cooler happened. So I was trying to troubleshoot this and uh, how to, uh, what, what sort of troubleshoot about a missing pad? Uh, I'm trying to figure out where to solder onto this thing so that I can just fix it. Uh, it's a signal wire, it's just a low voltage signal wire coming from something say like this, like a, a flight control board. So typically there'd be some solder mask, scratch it off and I could solder onto that and all would be fine except this thing doesn't have any ability. I can't do that because there's a bunch of other stuff around here, all these caps, all the caps hiding right around there. Um, and then there's a power wire on the back there. So basically what it turns out to, to be is if I want to find out where that pad goes to, find a way along there, because I, I, I can't, you know, if I'm going to scratch some solder mask off or just, you know, tack onto the next component in line, I got to figure out where it goes. So then um, I can't do it on this one because I can't probe a pad that doesn't have a pad on it. So I grab this one right here. Problem is, is this is a, a different brand, but if you look at them, the right side up, they're pretty close, you see? So I figure, good enough. I, ca I can use this one to trace some stuff out and maybe it apply it to this one and, uh, and that would be cool. Well, I probed everywhere on here multiple times and I can't find anything, but that doesn't mean anything necessarily uh, because the thing is conformally coded and it's kind of a pain in the ass take your little probe stick here and every tiny little pad that you get off of, every little leg off of each one of these chips, you kind of scratch it and you're trying to scratch the conformal coating way and hope that maybe you hear a little beep in there. Also, the big fatty probe tips, um, they don't really get down in between things so well. I need to go take them out to the shop and maybe sharpen them up or at least sharpen up a set so I can get down in there. Anyways, there's a few multiple reasons why I'm like, well, I, I know it's here somewhere, I just can't find it. The trace does not go directly across the top. This has been determined. It's cutting, going down. It's a multi-layer board. It's going through there. So in order to get at it, I'm going to have to cut this thing open. So bring in the safety hazard. This is going to, uh, this is what was the nearest thing to me. Uh, we'll cut this thing open and see if we can open it up and maybe you can see the traces inside. So that was the beginning of the idea. That was the, the beginning of the plan, and, and, and that's kind of how it went, but it went further. And then it got a little bit further, and then it kind of turned into something pretty cool. Uh, so I want to show you what I did here, how I basically took this right here, and I turned it into this. All right, here is the ESC uh, with the problem. So you can see it right here. Here is, so you're soldering away and, or you're desoldering. Here is the case with this. We're swapping this out and uh, these have typically lead-free solder on them. So lead-free solder melts, it's got a bit higher melt temperature and it's kind of phase change state change is kind of different than the others and so you know you're heating it up heating it up and it seems like it's just barely on the edge of melting so you're kind of pulling on it pulling on it and heating and pulling and you know it's 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 relatively easy to to pull a pad off if you're being too aggressive uh, better soldering iron maybe a little bit hotter temperature uh, typically you will end up uh, introducing some other leaded solder into it as you're doing this and it will kind of you know dilute it so to speak and then you can take it off a little bit easier anyways this this ends up you, you, I'm sure you can't see it in the video here but we've actually you know put it under the microscope too and it leaves a pretty good crater so you're lifting up you know what is just a foil of tin uh, of copper on here and you rip it away exposing the fiberglass underneath there 
Now, next to this somewhere, you would imagine there's a trace that goes off somewhere, and you have, you know, a, a, a solder mask coating the whole thing, but if you found the spot, you could scratch it away, and maybe you could tack onto there, and that's going to save you a little bit, you know, because not everybody, you know, it's not like it's really hard to afford $12 to get another one of these units, right? But, you know, a little bit of intelligence, and that's, you know, seems to be kind of what our deal is with these quads. We don't really, the people that are flying these, you know, home-built, um, uh, uh, high-speed race drones and freestyle drones, it's not like we're doing this, you know, purely to fly the drone. I, I can't imagine anybody in this uh, hobby slash field that is doing it purely just to fly and doesn't also enjoy or like doing all of this kind of uh, electronics and troubleshooting and, and such. Uh, maybe not thrilled, but you know, all the time, but it has to get done and we break them all the time. So maybe in the course of, oops, I have to buy another VTX antenna, oops, I got to buy another camera, oops, I lost my GoPro, you know, maybe I don't really want to spend uh, um, more money on ESCs, maybe. So I want to look at this. So here is, is what the problem is. Um, I can't find a spot over here anywhere. We're looking for conductivity. We can't see any kind of a trace under here to scratch off. And if you flip it over, right underneath is the positive of the battery. So you are really not probably going to find that right here under there is a via going through this, right, to the signal wire. Okay, moving over to this one here. Now these is this, right, just, right? Put together. So if you take this side off here, the side has all the MOSFETs on it, you flip this over and there is your ground plane. And yes, I have tested this to ground. I mean, it's pretty like almost super common that that's going to be ground, but yes, as a matter of fact, it is ground. And then over here is the interesting bit. So this is where a lot of these things are popping down through and going to. The one to question, this right here, this pad, see the S, oh sorry, I keep running off the camera. So this S right here, this is our signal wire, and we want this, so then we want to see this right here. And as you can see, it runs way the hell over to here. And my problem right now is I can't see where that goes to. It might be right on the leg of this, which is probably looks to be like a regulator or something. Um, I, I mean, it's usually not, a via is not going to run right into a pin. Uh, so I feel like it's right in here somewhere. But between the components and the conformal coating, I can't see it. And, uh, you know, it's not like this thing's going to fit, get fixed anyways. It's not like we're going to put this back together. So what I've decided to do, like I said, is we're going to rip off all of these components and we're going to take it out to the shop. We're going to sand this thing down again and get it to look just like this. So now we can all have some pictures, basically a schematic of what is going on in one of these ESCs. And I didn't plan on doing it because, you know, well, I don't know. I don't know. I've in order to split this, I kind of bent it a bit, but uh, I guess we could probably rip these suckers off of here too, just for the sake of thoroughness. Then it's documented, the internet has it, anybody else that wants to have it can have, have it too. Now this is the Armiton uh, uh, ESCs that they sell, the 30 amp um, ESCs, but uh, the other ones were like Make Fire. We had some of those cheap ones and other ones. And they, they seem to be the similar, very, very similar circuit for the most part. So I think this is going to kind of work out to be pretty darn similar for a, a broad range of these.
Here's a sign your board got a little hot. First we're going to go ahead and clean these off. That's just isopropyl alcohol. No real need to have too much more aggressive than that around. Maybe some acetone. This is probably okay. This is 120 grit. Difficult. Need a tool. This is sealing tape, tacky tape. We use this in composites. I think this might work okay. Seems to work good for just about everything else. Yeah. So I'm moving it around so I can put more pressure on different ends because I feel like I'm putting pressure right in the middle. And I don't want to sand through the traces, of course. Uh-oh. God damn it. All right, I can't. I can't. I can't. God damn it! I, I have to I have to do it again. So here's I already started this one. So I figured I'd show you how I'm doing this. Uh, I really just wanted to call it good, but this is the major part of the board that I I want to be able to see. So anyways, it gives me a chance to show you how I did this. So take a knife. Don't stick it way the hell out here. Just a little bit. Right. Get in here now. <laughs> if you can't make your muscles work the way you want them to work, don't do this. So you're going to work at it, and I'm prying really, you know, very, very careful. See, I'm pushing pretty hard, and if it slips or breaks, because these can break, you're going to bleed. So then... I'm going to screw this up, so I'm going to get over here a little bit more, work it, work it, work it gently. Make sure you're going right down the center of the board, otherwise, if you're going diagonal, it's going to increase the chance that you're going to take a sliver off the side and cut into your finger. It would probably be easier to do... Oops. It'd probably be easier to do if you desoldered all these first. It would make it maybe a little bit more flexible. In a way, I kind of don't want it to be flexible because that was the problem with the other one. It had, not the reason why I screwed up the other one, I wasn't paying attention, but the other one, um, the side of the ground plane came out kind of curved because it was the side I was prying against. So, let's, let's go in here now. This is the, this is the harder part right here because if I can get this, I'm going crooked. Because what you got to do here, if I remember right, there's some vias going right through there, so I'm essentially trying to cut through the vias of that power pad. Oi. Scary, scary, scary. 
Okay, there we go. So now, once you get it kind of going and you get through that first section there, then you can start, give it a little twist. Yeah, because, you know, I'm an expert at this, right? Because I've done it once. This one, this side came out fine, so I want to try to pry that side away. Can you hear that? Okay. Now this, yeah, that's the side that's got the rail running down it. You might, you might actually desolder this. That probably, no, I think that's going to hold that more rigid. Let's go with that. So let's screw up the side. There we go. There we are. So now it pops away. And this last little bit here, where the uh, the motors wire to, they are a straight. I mean, they're they're pads and pads with vias running through. So be careful hacking through those. There we go. Because you got to cut all the vias. There we are. Okay, oh, that's kind of not what I want to do, but okay. See? Ground plane. Get rid of that. I'm going to have to sand those down, and then I'm going to risk sanding too far again. Now, okay, this is the middle ply separation. So you could sand this, probably. I got it kind of bent right there. Okay, you could sand that, but I, th I feel like the more you have to sand, the, the more you risk going into it. about tearing ESCs apart like it's a training video. So what I did the first time is I took this and I just came by here and peeled it. I spent a lot more time scrape, 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 scraping it, you know, and before I, I thought that, you know, hey, why don't I go out and grab some sandpaper? So I think if you just kind of get the majority of the big pieces off, you kind of scrape through here. Uh, this is fiberglass, right? Remember, I mean, I think it's kind of obvious, but uh, if you watched any of my other boards, uh, boards, see? What's with the boards? Uh, I make snowboards, right? Or, for a long time. So I work with composites, make long boards, uh, teach advanced aerospace composite courses. Um, I can tell you fiberglass, carbon fiber, all this, this, this crap here, this is horribly bad for you, you know, I mean, you don't want to breathe these particles, but it's itchy as crap. Um, if you get this all over you or on your floor and you swipe it around, like right now, okay, I guess I'm kind of used to it, you know, but you, you're probably not going to like this. And if you have something like this and you get like an itchy eye or something, do not, do not wipe your flipping eye with your hands like this. Make sure you wash them off good. Also, the resin that holds it together is, you know, not edible. All right, screw this. I think this is probably, I'm just going to go give this a try sanding. Because the last time I was like freaking picking, 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 picking at this. And I kind of think I don't need to. So let's go try the, I'll just go do some sanding. You don't need to watch me sand again. Be right back.
Okay, so I'm glad I did that. This uh, wasn't too bad to do it again. So again, this one right here, this is the one here that I screwed up. Um, I'm glad I took the time to fix it because here's where all the, what the probably driver chips are and such. It's going to be interesting for anybody else to take a look at. Um, so then this is sitting here like this. This is, so here's, here's the heat sink for it. This normally sitting on here. This is your 30 amp ESC. Here is down like this. And then what you have here is this layer sits right on top like that on this. So you can see chip, 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 chip. There's your tantalum. Here is a uh, regulator right here. And uh, what is that? A little regulator right in there. And all the other stuff. And you can see here how your, your caps are arranged and such right there. And then this side. So coming in here... Uh, from underneath, underneath here, and you can kind of see the pad was cleared out of the way for this, underneath is where battery power comes in, and up here is your signal and your ground wires to control the motors, which then go out here. Okay. Then this has on the other side, so that's this top layer here, the traces that I was after because I was trying to hunt down this signal wire that we ripped the pad up. In the beginning, by the way, wherever it is here, where is it? This one? This is one of the Makefire ones, and these are Armitons. And so, um, it's a little bit different, as you can see. It's almost kind of flipped around, but I'm hoping... That I should be able to still figure it out based upon what component it appears to go to. Anyways, in a second. So this is the underside of that. And then this right here is the flip side over here like this. Okay, then lastly, just for my own well-being, to show you what I was after here and see if I can fix this thing, here is on... Not to get this all confused here. Uh, I'm getting it confused. Okay. Here again is my signal wire on the bottom outside left. And that correlates to this pad right here. You flip that over and that ends up right here. And running way the hell off here. No wonder I had no clue where I was going. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my tweezies. I'm going to grab it right there. Right there. And flip it over. Do you see where I landed? Right on that pad right there. So then if we take this so memorize that that looks like it falls right in here. Now that's going to be a via popping up here, and a via is probably not... get over there. It's probably not going to pop up right under the leg. So then you can almost see that that kind of a trace right there... Sorry, screw the via thing. That's, that's this right here. So that you can kind of see the little bit of a curve right there and then because it comes from here it travels up to maybe what looks to be oh that's tiny a four or two little little tiny resistor down there there okay put this up here and <laughs> oh, control So I've got a wire here, got multimeter here, and uh, so then what I can do is I get right in here, and there it is. So now it's good, it's good, no, no confetti yet exactly, but I could maybe, maybe solder a wire, signal wire from here onto there. Again, remember, on the pad that's broken. 
I could solder it onto there if if I if I can, you know, without touching all the rest of the stuff around there. Oh man, okay, so I was considering uh, <laughs> clipping out some stuff and editing and backing up and saying, hey, yeah, let's, we're done. But I really wanted to put a finish on this. So all of this testing was done on an Armiton 30 amp ESC, splitting these apart because I had some extra or dead ones laying around. And the one that was a problem was make fire. Make, make fire, make fire, make fire, yeah. And it's a little different. And so then I wanted to say, yeah, you know, it should be okay. It's pretty much the same, but it really isn't. And so I wanted to show you, here is what I did. This, this one here, as we figured out, that this signal wire on the outside ends up going, um, let's do this slow and careful. So signal wire here goes over to the other side. Over here, runs up to here. Do the pinchy thing. Grab it. Wait. Oh my gosh, it's starting to shake. So it goes over here, and it ends up on this pad right here. Uh oh, pissed off multimeter. Goes up over to here, which that is in this case, is this what, 042 little tiny resistor right in there. And then that leads on. But anyways, we know that this is where signal wire leads to. So if, like I said, I was feeling frisky, I could theoretically get a wire put onto that, and I could get the thing fixed. I should mention this. I'm not, and have zero intention of actually doing this, right? So if you're watching this, and wondering why you're still watching it, and wondering why I'm still dinking around with this, this is only to figure the thing out. These things, too cheap. Right? So, I'm not going to do that. But I wanted to know. So there's that. But then over here, this one, the pattern is, it's very similar, but different. You know, we've got this regulator flipped around over here. The tantalum, is, I mean, it's almost like the whole thing is just kind of, oh, what the butts. Um, it's like the whole thing is just almost mirrored, but it's not mirrored. Uh, these are in the same position up here. Uh, things look kind of more similar up there. Not as many caps down here. Anyways, the signal wire being on the inside here and this arrangement right here being different, I'm not sure where it goes. So, I want to show you what I did. So, cut to the chase. I figured it out, right? But, uh, here's what we do. So, I'm looking at this one. Same yada yada. Oh, jeez. Get this thing turned around. So, following this, this goes to this resistor. So then my next thought is like, okay, if I cannot figure out which one of these resistors the signal wire goes to, because on this one the pad is ripped off, and I already tried jabbing it down into the via there, and I can't, I can't get a hold of anything. And on top of it, how would you know if you did or not, and you don't know if you're plugging into the right one, and you don't, you just wouldn't know. So, um, if you're on the right resistor or not, or if you're in the right via. Or if you're all the way in the via, holy good God. And so, what I thought was, okay, on the known good one, where do things go next? And then maybe I can correlate that to this. So, this, bring this back in frame. This, again, is a resistor. But if you can see that really close right here, there is a little trace from here to here. And so then, it doesn't seem to go anywhere. So I'll grab this, and we'll flip it. You see where we end up? So we end up right there on this little dude. So then this little guy right here goes up to here. Things are getting tricky. Right here. Make sure if you're doing this, you got really good tweezers. And then that ends up right here. Okay, does it really? Oh boy. Oh. Get back to your multimeter. So get this going. So leg bones connected to ankle bones. 
signal wire to right here, to right there. Then this goes across the resistor right here. These two right here are connected. This one here bounced over to what looked like a trace that ran up to maybe this pin right here. Yay. Okay, so configurations being seemingly common at that end, then maybe I could find, okay, here, here's the big if, okay, if I could find the resistor that's down here, since I can't find it from the signal path coming up to it first, maybe I can find it from this first pin left side, whatever, um, coming back down. So I look, and I see a row of resistors right here. Well, there's some stuff not populated here, but this is the resistor I'm after right there, if you can see that. Over in this one here, there's a row of resistors right there. I'm hoping, thinking maybe my first best guess is maybe the obvious one that it's this one down here at the bottom. Okay, so I get this carefully. Oh, come on. Right in there, which actually, you can't see it probably right here, but there is a trace running out, and they have nicely a bunch of pads. Too bad I can't just solder onto that. Now, since I know what that resistor is there for, and that's the only thing in line, I could find out what it is, or just yank it out, stick it on this pad, and stuff a wire into it, and tape it to it. Right. Um, that's it. Yay! I am done. It's late. This was longer, way longer than I wanted to do with this, but I uh, I'd take with this, but I really wanted to get this finished. And so, there's my story. What I want to show you is these traces right here, and I'll again, I'll take some pictures of them and put it right here at the end of this video or something like that so that you can take a good screenshot of it, and if you need to trace one of these out, this is essentially the schematic. Thanks.